Are you new to the game or inexperienced and worry that because you don't understand everything in the game you're not going to be successful? Do you just have a need to get through seasons as quickly as possible without having to fuss around certain screens in the game? But whichever one of these two categories you fall into, don't worry, help is in hand. Because today we're going to look at five major things in the game that you don't need to bother with. And this will speed up your experience or will just allow you to be successful while you are learning pieces of the game. Let's go and kick some balls. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to FM with Old Man Phil and if you are a first time visitor I'm Phil and welcome to the channel. And this week I got to thinking is there a difference in how I am playing the game this year to how I played the game last year and the year before that and I started to analyse what I'm doing and I found that there are huge differences in how I am playing the game this year and in terms of which category I fall into of course I'm not a novice but I do as a YouTube creator I do have a need to get through seasons as fast as possible I need to get through five or six games so I can record the next episode I don't have the time to play the game as I used to and now it's much more of let's get through it as fast as we can and so I started to realize there are certain things that I don't do and there are five major things in fact that I just actually don't touch at all and I wonder does it have an effect on the amount of things that I win well let's have a look at Sundowns who I've just left as a club in my journeyman save well we've won the title we won the Champions League we won the South African FA Cup we won the South African Super 8 Cup however we didn't win the South African Knockout Cup and I do wonder, was it the fact that I'm not doing certain things that made the difference and made me lose in the South African Knockout Cup? I don't know, but I don't think so. Let me look at the schedule. It all speaks for itself. The fact that I am not doing things does not mean that I am not winning trophies. And so for those who are new to the game and don't understand all these complex screens that will pop up when you scroll down here and you just want to get on with the game but you do want to be a little bit successful or for those of you who don't want to get involved in the nuts and bolts under the bonnet but just want to play through seasons and win trophies I'm going to share with you the five things the five major things that I don't do anymore and still win trophies and so if you are brand new to the channel and you like FM content and you love to see people suffer playing this game, then I can tell you you are definitely in the right place. So why not hit that subscribe button, click the bell, and you'll be updated when we upload future videos. That said, let's take a look at the five things that I no longer do. And I do now apply the principle of if you buy a dog, why bark yourself? And so a lot of things that people do seem to think that are important in the game, I just simply ignore and allow others to do. And so the first one of these things is training. And if we go to our training screens, there are a lot of things that are going on here. And is this important? I don't believe it is. It hasn't stopped me winning trophy after trophy. And so I don't do that. I just simply leave it to the staff. I have absolutely no involvement in any of the training tabs whatsoever. And it hasn't made a blind bit of difference to the success that I am having on the pitch. And so I'm going to do exactly the same thing for recruitment. And if I go to my scouting tab, you can see there's a number of tabs along the top here. I don't have to get involved in any of that nonsense. I don't have to create recruitment focuses. I don't need to do anything. And similarly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my staff tab. I'm going to go to responsibilities and I'm going to go to scouting and I'm going to delegate all of these boxes and I'm not going to worry about scouting at all after that. I'm going to ask the director of football to find and start negotiating players for the first team although I will have the final say. I will always control sales and then for loans delegate, for young players for the future delegate but always finalise and so on all the way down delegating all of these but always maintaining control by having control of finalizing player signings there's a couple of things to remember when delegating all this recruitment stuff you do need to keep an eye on your director of football he will be constantly approaching players and starting negotiations but you will get an email about it and then once you see that email just check on the players report if you don't like what you're seeing then you can go to the transfers page and then you can click off and cancel the transfer in here he doesn't seem to mind he 
he will just keep coming up with these deals. All you've got to do is keep an eye on him. You will get an email every time he approaches a player, so don't worry about it. You can simply cancel the deal that he's currently negotiating. And that happens because you've clicked that box which gives you the final say on the negotiations and the deals that he's doing. Now, you don't have to leave it to the director of football. You can still go into your scouting tab. You can still go and find scouted players and you can still look for specific players in specific positions and you will find decent players. This for me is like having a meeting with the scouts and saying, what have you found in this particular position? And so you still have total control over player recruitment, but you are getting help from the director of football. And as long as you keep a close eye on the rubbish that he might be trying to bring into the club, then it will be a perfect job and you don't really need to do anything. And that's the beauty of this. You can just worry about on the field stuff. And then moving on to point number three, the data hub. And there are a lot of people who swear by the data hub and there is tons of information in here. And I don't use any of it. I don't need to go in here. The only thing that I would possibly go in here for would be to look at this screen to find out how the next opposition are going to play. Gives me an idea of the kind of thing I'm up against. And that is the only reason I will go into the data hub. Now, I know there are people out there who swear by it, but it is tricky to get your head around all the information contained in here. And if you don't have the time, you don't need to. Just totally ignore it as I do. <laughs> And you'll still find that you're winning matches and winning trophies. If you're new to the game, don't worry about it. But learn about it slowly. But remember that you don't need to know anything about this in order to win games when you're a complete beginner. Just don't worry about it at all. And so moving on to number four, and that would be in the realm of opposition instructions. And I used to be one of those people who meticulously went through every one of the players and set my own opposition instructions for them. Now I don't bother. I just click Ask Assistant up the top here. He gets on with it and it doesn't seem to have any effect on the outcome of the game this year. But what I will do when asking the assistant to do it is at half time, I will then ask him again to do it and you will notice that it changes. He has re-evaluated and will change the opposition instructions a little bit. And then I will do it one final time between 75 and 80 minutes because at that time they will have made their substitutions and it will have given him a little bit of a time to make evaluations and that might help you in terms of conceding late goals. And so that is another thing now that I don't get involved in which saves me a lot of time. It's just clicking one button. And finally, the last area of the game that I am really not going to get involved in because this really does use up a great deal of time is renewal of contracts. And the only contracts that I am interested in renewing myself will be the first team squad. I have no interest in renewing any of the other contracts. Now, this does not mean that you're not going to be able to put together a very good staff. You can see that the staff is extremely good and I've only been here for three seasons but the staff themselves and the board have managed to put this together and it has become a very, very good staff. So once again, all you need to do is go to your staff tab and the only one in the general category that you need to actually click for yourself is handles team selection for the first team. And the others, all these recruitment tabs can be delegated and most of you as you can see is delegated to the director of football and then moving on to the contracts tab next to it everything to do with contracts with the staff is actually delegated to the director of football again this is not something that I want to involve myself in finally I will go to transfer and contracts and go to contracts and the only thing that you can see I have responsibility for is player contract discussions for the first team squad. Everything else has been delegated again to the director of football. And this is really about why buy a dog and bark yourself. If you have a good director of football, as you've seen, he will put together a good staff and the staff will do everything in terms of training and recruitment. They will look after opposition instructions. Once you have that in place, then the game has suddenly become really easy. 
And therefore, if I'm a beginner, I don't need to worry about anything other than playing the games. And if I'm one of those players of the game who just doesn't have a great deal of time, I'm going to be able to whiz through game after game without affecting the results on the pitch. And so that's it for this video. If you are brand new to the channel and you like FM content and you particularly love to see people suffer when they're playing this game, then I can tell you you're definitely in the right place. So why not hit that subscribe button and click the bell and give us a like because it's likes and comments that help drive the algorithm to people who've not yet had a chance to see any of our videos. And so, as I said, that's it for this video. And thanks for watching. And I hope you got something out of it. And if you are brand new to Football Manager, I'm sure, and will take away a lot of the worries that you had about how on earth am I going to consume all this information? You don't need to. And all that remains to be said now is stay safe, take care, and we'll see you in the next one.